Okay, it's Henry at Versatile 3D, and I am going to uh, add a print head with an extruder dock onto the 554 model. This is a pro model. It's got the 15 millimeter rail, so we're going to remove the rail and uh, actually slide the rail block on from uh, this print head right onto this rail. So to do that, we've got to loosen the belts, take the rail off of the Y carriages. Uh, I have these towers set up to set the, the rail on, and, and it goes from there pretty simply. So uh, first thing is really just to uh, loosen the Corex Y belts, upper and lower. So I've got belt tensioners on the left side of the printer. Uh, that loosens the belts. This is loose now. And uh, just to get it a little looser, I just kind of pop it off the back stepper pulley here. And once that's off, got a lot more flexibility. I can get this stepper belt off. And now the belts are completely loose pretty quickly. That's not a problem. And we'll just move that over. So now the idea is we're going to have the rail setting on these two uh, posts that will be set in here. Drop that one. Alright, so they're magnetized so they stay with the rail there. Wish that had happened before. All right, so, uh, so that rail's ready to come off, and so it's two M3 screws on each end that hold the rail to the Y carriage. So uh, just take them screws off. And there's also this spacer which holds the rail in place which is the uh, RCO rail, cl rail clip, one on each end. The reason for that is if you have a 12 millimeter rail, then this is a different clip. It comes with the Y carriage, so depending on whichever you're using the longer 15 millimeter rail or the 12 millimeter rail, you just use a different clip. Uh, and then the Y carriage is the same. So the front Y carriage, both Y carriages are duplicates. One, they could be uh, interchanged, of course. Not a mirror or anything, they're exact duplicates. And there's the clip for that side. So, in there, leave a little room here. And there's our Y rail off. Now the new, this print head, uh, the extruder mount, all the connections come in through the dock, if you can see that. I'll try to give a better close-up, but all the connections, the cable and everything is through here, so you don't have to make any connections. It's all pre-wired. So uh, this printer has four extruder docks, so I can add up to four heads, extra heads on this one. I'm going to put this extruder dock in the number uh, three position. It doesn't matter. I can put it anywhere I want. It's just the configuration. So. Alright, oh by the way, always turn the uh, printer controller off before doing that because you're not supposed to, pull, even though it's a duet, it works pretty well, I've never blown one up, but uh, best practice, turn it off before you go plug in your extruder dock in because that's the stepper connection, the heater connection, the fans connection, the light, the uh, uh, everything, it's all in that one connector there. Alright, so... Now we're going to prep this end to go onto the rail. I've just got this uh, 
you know, they give you the plastic uh, holders that come with your rail blocks, and so I keep it clipped down with a binder clip, and then just simply slide it on, just like anything else. This is the kind of thing that if you're good at snake handling, it's real easy. So, uh, I'm getting better as time goes by. After I do that, I like to actually take this, set it on this side, and so now that is safe from coming off, although it's going to be back on here in a moment. So then uh, just basically take the rail clip again. That one on. This one on. Two M3 screws hold the, the rail clip on, and the rail, of course, to the Y carriages, one on each end. It's got a lock washer, so get it tight to grip that in. You want the rail coming off. No, don't lock tight it. Doesn't need that. It's got a lock washer. All right. So we've got the rail back on. That was only a couple of minutes and pretty much done. Uh, really just down to retightening the belts again. So just pull the uh, upper belt, sorry, the lower belt through to uh, it's stepper here. Oh, come on, a little slack. There we go. Ah, that's all hooked around that print. Line. There we go. All right. Put that belt around that stepper. Bring this belt back over around this stepper. This has already been squared up, but you can check it if you want afterward. It never changes, it never has. Once it's squared, it stays square no matter what you do, unless you change these two settings right here. It'll stay square forever. Never had a problem. All right. So that print head is on, and we can clamp it to the belt anywhere we want. I've got configuration saved for two print heads, however many print heads, up to four on this, so I'll just go ahead and turn on the configuration for this uh, third print head. Alright, tighten the uh, belts back up. Belts are tensioned up. It's homing with the second print head on. Uh, it's plugged into the extruder dock. Uh, it needs to have the configuration change still, but uh, that's just uh, selecting the other configuration. We'll let it home. And that's it. That's how you add a uh, print head. Uh, next would be to uh, set the printhead height. This one has a volcano now, this one has a standard nozzle. 
so uh, I'm going to be adding a, no a volcano nozzle on here because we are currently making the uh, visor, the visors for the uh, uh, face shields. which is these here and we're making these in mass right now and we want this to be making uh, two at a time so we're setting another print head on here and letting it rip so after I'm done here I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the volcano nozzle on I'm going to do that in a separate video and that's about it thanks for watching